Listeners be advised. The Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Please remain seated until the oxygen mask is dropped. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holiloquy Podcast. This is your, oh, I messed that all the way up. Oh, my God. Anyways, let's just (laughs) rewind. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and those freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, I am blessed to be with Tyrell once more, and we are talking about sexually transmitted infections. If y'all don't know what that is, that's also STDs. That is also things that you might catch when you're out here having sex. So to start off this, oh, what were you about to say? Oh, no, I was about to say yes. Yeah, interchangeable. Interchangeable terms. (laughs) How you want to define, no matter how you want to define. Look, now to start off this conversation, let's start talking about the stigmas related to STIs. What you got for me? Oh, you know, it's so interesting for all of my TV lovers out there by now, you know, guys know I've mentioned before how much of a TV fanatic I am. So I'm going to reference TV for just a moment Uh, (laughs) for anybody who is a fan of the medical drama New Amsterdam. They actually just recently had a episode where they dealt with the ER case of um, older adults in a, you know, in a kind of nursing home environment had a outbreak of gonorrhea. Mm. And um, the nature of the episode, it was such, it was actually, it was funny at first because of the fact, obviously the doctor of the show having to question these older adults about their sexual activity, knowing that depending on what kind of culture you stem from, you know, you do not ask older, you know, adults mm-hmm. about their sex life. A lot of older adults even deny having a sex life, even though it was clearly an outbreak that was happening. And so the nature of the episode, if you happen to watch the show and things like that, you'll know that the doctor who was involved in this particular case, how she really thought it was a shame that older adults really, you know, feel stigmatized by the nature of the fact that they don't they don't feel comfortable in spaces to ask like se- like sex questions mm-hmm. and so the nature of the episode that's how it transpired she got them all together and you know told them to ask anything you know so they asked questions about is it okay after a certain age not to you know use condoms you know is it okay you know um to still tell their partner you know what it is that they're wanting and, you know, just all of, you know, just all of these, you know, kind of feel good topics when it comes to uh, sex and sex education, because I think that that's a big misconception. Sex education doesn't stop, you mm-hmm. know, when you get to be, you know, venture into adulthood. Sex education is throughout the nature of your life, because as we age, as our wants and our desires tend to change, so does the education around those wants and desires. So I just want to, you know, put, you just want to put that out there. If you haven't checked out that episode, definitely do that. Man, now, not you about to already have me on a whole ass tangent in the episode just fucking started. <laughs> oh my God. This is what we're going to do today, Tyrell. This is what the fuck we're going to do. But I'm we gonna like, like you said, sex education is throughout your, your life. Um, you should be learning about certain things related to uh, human sexuality uh, at a young age. What, what the first thing you need to be learning is consent, which is something that we're not taught. You exactly. should know bad touch, good touch, 
Um, you should not be forced to hug people. You should have body autonomy throughout your life. But that's the conversation that a lot of people are not ready and willing to have. And I think in the nature of discussing, you know, the nature of STIs, I think that a lot of times the reason why we don't have a proper education about it is because of how we have tended to learn about it. I know mm -hmm. speaking personally for myself, I didn't really have sex education in, in high school. Basically, we had like physical health class and pretty much the main things that were discussed about sex were obviously the biological factors and STD. So I remember I one of the distinct things I do remember is sitting in my health class and all of a sudden there's one day we're in class and we're just being slow showed this slideshow of just like different pictures of different STDs and I'm just like uh, well, one, uh, but <laughs> oh, and I'm just, but you know what's going through my mind is that okay, is like is this all you know? So mm -hmm. I don't know if any, I don't know, you know, it's kind of like oh, if I have you know unprotected sex or if I'm in a situation to you know where I'm having unprotected sex, like oh, is this automatically just gonna happen? You know, what are the statistics? You know, um, mm -hmm. how does you know STIs obviously affect? Uh, self-identifying men, self-identifying women or anyone in between, you know, and it's just like all of these questions just, you know, float around through your mind, but it's just like, oh, here it is. And, <laughs> and I, without I, no type of context. Of anything. Nothing. Like, I, I have to say, I had a very similar education, well, lack thereof, uh, sex ed as well. It's like, I remember in middle school, we we're just told, okay, these are STDs. Uh, you know, I think about, you know, that dream, um, that, um, mean girls moment when they're you know uh the coach Ooh. is just like you have sex you get uh um, yeah, you will die, die. yeah exactly. <laughs> like, that's essentially what we're uh, that's exactly what it is <laughs> so i'm like uh in middle school i'm like okay so you're saying if i have sex with somebody you mentioned condom birth uh the they just said the pill uh, you have the pill um, for pregnancy and you have condoms but you should be abstinent because you know you can catch these diseases and whatnot and I'm like okay but you're not really telling me anything and that actually was that lack of information is what got me on my journey of you know where I am today of exactly. learning more about sex of learning about sexuality learning about what these diseases mean I should not have been uh in the seventh grade or eighth grade looking into health statistics about um teenage pregnancy because this was not answered to me uh in in uh in school and i'm trying to figure out why the hell are these middle school kids coming around with big stomachs and pregnant i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going yeah and and that was actually honestly speaking you know just for my story why I was never really a social butterfly in school, but a good part of the reason why I abstained from sex, you know, in, in school was because of the fact I just, I, I didn't know, you know, growing up that sex was for pleasure. I really was thinking that sex was just for biological purposes. Mm -hmm. So I automatically assumed that, you know, obviously before I knew I was attracted to men, um, you know, I was, I just had this mentality, the fact that, oh, I thought that if I had sex, like what would happen if I got, you know, a girl pregnant mm -hmm. or, you know, something along those lines, I was like, oh, no, I definitely don't, you know, want that. So, you know, that was one of the big reasons why I even abstained, you know, from sex and, you know, in school, but yeah, it's just like, you know, when, when you're discussing sexual health, it's, it really can't even be called sexual health because you're not being given any type of context, no mm -hmm. kind of social responsibility that, you know, we need to have obviously for each other. And I think now, because obviously, oh, I'm telling our age right now. So <laughs> obviously because, uh, you know, we were as big on social media like we are today, right? Um, where, you know, we do, you know, have our favorite, you know, sex, you know, sex content creators and, you know, things like that, where you do see a lot of sex that is happening, interactions that are happening without, you know, proper protection or, con you know, or condom use that I think now, perhaps then I may be speaking prematurely. I think now I can only imagine all of, imagine all of the mixed messages that kids have now coming up. Because on one hand, you're wanting to follow the right example and making sure that, yeah, you are using protection. You're doing this, you're doing that. But figuring out, as you mentioned earlier, how do you actually have autonomy of your own body? And what does that look like? 
you know, for for you. And also because of the fact we have, you know, just a click and instant access to free porn, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh, I see these adult stars are not, you know, necessarily doing it. So it must, maybe it must be okay, you know, and I'm not saying that to be true, but I can, you know, only imagine that they, those may be some of the mixed messages that, you know, are, are coming, where they're coming from. Yeah. And it's like, I even think back to like, I, I learned more about the reproductive uh, system in uh, high school uh, mm-hmm. in my anatomy class where my anatomy teacher, she made it a, a, a purpose, her um, a purpose to educate us properly in mm-hmm. terms of how the body functions, but not necessarily to provide sex ed, which I'm not faulting her for because that was not part of her job. Wow. But uh, even just knowing that side of things, I'm still stuck on, okay, so this is how a person gets pregnant. That's great. But this is not um, telling me anything about the transmission of diseases and we're not getting any um, value there. And I think the first time I actually got anything that dealt with statistics and how it impacts populations was when I got into college. And even that presentation was more so shaming people uh, about having sex and actually educating them about uh, having sex. Like if anybody who attended my um, meeting, the the meeting that I was at uh, for in college, they would have just been disgusted to even um, be sexually interested in any person that is from the city of Macon or lived within that community because the, the, the slideshow that they're presenting us is, oh, this person who uh, whose entire, like their penis pretty much decayed. Um, mm-hmm. They suffered from this disease and they're uh, of this community. Uh, and it was a black person, spotty too, which even made it even more uh, offensive in my eyes. But it's like, so you're telling us that we cannot be out here on these streets uh, hooking up with these people because you're telling us as college students that the community that we're in is unsafe, most definitely to engage in sexual activity with. So you should just stay on campus, pretty much. Wow. That is what you told us. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, even for like for my college experience, it was kind of like I went to, you know, a small, you know, kind of like HBCU. And I remember like during freshman orientation, as they were talking about, you know, developing relationships and, you know, things like that, they were like, you know, be careful about who you decide to engage with, because, you know, being at a small college, you know, word spreads. So, you know, your mm-hmm. business is not just, you know, your business. And I remember, uh, whenever they had the um, the sexual health uh, vehicles um, and programs that used to come to, you know, do like the HIV testing and, you know, things like that, that even that was even before, obviously, um, I was sexually active. And the thing is, just as a, you know, an adult and even just, you know, not necessarily, obviously, I wasn't sexually active at the time, but I just always felt an enormous responsibility to know my sexual status, you know, know my Mm -hmm. sexual status. So it was always a trip because me and some of my other, you know, people who I used to hang with, we would, you know, stand by the truck, you know, waiting for our turn. And there would not be like a line that was forming to, you know, make sure that, you know, you're getting tested and things like that. And, you know, we kind of had kind of like the inside joke is like, yeah, you know, considering we know certain people's business, like they need to have a lot more people around the mm. truck. A word, (laughs) you know, and it's not even, you know, like you say, it was not even necessarily about shaming, but it's just the nature. I think the messages of shame as to say, like, if you have engaged, you know, with unprotected sex or you have engaged with somebody who has had multiple sex partners, there is this, you know, kind of connotation that, oh, like that person is dirty. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. 
The Holiloquy podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. Partners, there is this, you know, kind of connotation that oh, like that person is dirty or, you know, like something, you know, along those lines. And then if you have engaged with that person, it's like now you don't want to take accountability or ownership that you have a role that now you have a role in this. And more and more often than not, you need to be getting tested, you know, you need to be getting tested more. And it's not, you know, and, you know, as obviously as we're talking, it's not coming from a place of shame. It's coming Mm -hmm. from a place of knowing Mm -hmm. because if you don't know then you don't know how to uh properly proceed in your continued you know um sexual encounters and that's what is the main is the main problem you know Mm -hmm. because i i know there's so many people who uh are out here like oh uh i i don't have any uh any diseases or whatnot and i'm like okay when was the last time you were tested and their last test date was like um six months ago and I'm like you're too you're <laughs> if I, you're too active out here to just have that be your last one right. um and it's, it's it's not to shame or anything it's just if you know that you're having frequent sex with people exactly. and different people at that you should be testing regularly right. you should not just be uh, relying on just one test result from t- six months ago to still be accurate today That's not how it works. That's not how diseases work. That's not how life works. That's like, oh, I got paid um, 10, let's say I got paid $2,000 six months ago. Do you still got that that, uh, $2,000 today? No, Mm -hmm. it depreciated more than likely. The same thing happens with your, your health. Things change on a daily basis. Emergencies change. Emergencies might pop up. Our exposures might come up. Mm -hmm. You should, you should treat your, your uh, health with importance you should be out here getting tested regularly and and we also should be having the conversation you know sometimes you know sexual transmission does not necessarily just even happen through sexual contact if Mm. you have been exposed to you know people if you are or have been exposed to people who are doing drugs as far as needles and you know just other you know types of you know, equipment, you know, such as that, you know, it could make you more, you know, susceptible to, you know, certain, to certain infections, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, so, you know, that's a conversation that, you know, doesn't, you know, get, get had as much, you know, either. And then especially as, you know, I think we're moving into, um, you know, I, I want to say like, not necessarily drug induced, but, you know, you just, you know, you have your recreational drugs you know mm-hmm. of course but then you know of course you have your hardcore drug you know drug use. Yeah. and depending on who it is that you know you may be engaging with that may be a you know that may be a concern that you know you need to take uh very much into account because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't think about what their recreational drugs do to their body's immune system on a regular mm-hmm. basis yeah. is it actually strengthening anything or is it weakening it uh, i think uh, alcohol is one of those um on drugs that actually um weakens your immune system don't don't quote me on that uh, uh it's been a while since i looked at this but i really do think that is one of those that um weaken your immune system so if you're out here having drunk sex unprotected sex on top of that you don't have a strong enough immune system to be combating anything so you should really be worried about what you're doing in those times exactly. um so it's like to be because even when it comes to the the shame that some people may have, you know, about being clean or, or, you know, dirty, whatever the case may be, what steps are you actually making to ensure that you're not giving somebody else something? Exactly. Like just because you got tested for HIV, are you getting, are you doing a full panel? Do you yeah. know if you have HSV one, uh, HSV two, even though um, HSV one is not considered uh, STI and shoot HP, uh, HP, um, HSP, Herpes simplex virus. There we go. HSV two and it in one, they're pretty much the same thing. But it's like how 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 in depth are you going into your study of your own sexual health? Exactly. Um, another another thing that we uh, well that you brought up uh, in our discussion for this episode was uh, anal health and HPV. Um, what what do you have to say about that essentially? You know, I think that. Um, 
if you are if you are going to engage um, with the nature of anal sex, it there's obviously certain precautions that you know obviously that you need to take. Obviously, we we kind of know the um, the process surrounding douching and you know just things like that, which I have heard you know um, doctors um, have gone on record to you know say because I think when it comes to anal penetration. Um, I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, you do want to douche because you know the fact that, you know, uh, you want to be clean, you know, you, you know, you feel like, you know, obviously being clean and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, however, I do know that many medical professionals have gone on record to say like, but just be careful because if you're doing it, you know, too much, you can be upsetting you know, your actual intestines and things that, you know, have to happen naturally with your body. And even as I was reading, um, uh, a couple medical professionals were saying that, you know, a lot of times with anal, uh, anal penetration or anal sex, it, it's really a fear of something happening. Because if you think about your, your body and your health system, it's kind of like your body does a natural job of cleaning cleaning you mm -hmm. out so when you consistently mess with that you know that can you know that can essentially pose problems so you know it's kind of like you know to be clean you know a simple routine of bathing the soap water you know like it does the you know, like it does the <laughs> trick like you know you don't need to have you know um uh, you know kind of out there measures um now i do know that there are you know also um or you know kind of like herbal supplements that you know don't you know harm anything actually um i for one even though i don't engage with anal penetration off you know too too mm -hmm. often i do like taking um which i do have i have a supplement which is the pure for men uh capsules that you know kind of uh regulate um you know um you know, like the, those organs in those areas. Mm -hmm. And they also have, you know, other nutritional, um, you know, kind of aspects. But, um, you know, I do say, you know, if you're, you're going to engage, you know, with anal penetration, anal sex, you know, to, yeah, be aware of certain, you know, certain things, but, you know, not to go overboard, you know, in thinking that, okay, I have to do all of these things, you know, to, to get, you know, to get ready, to get ready for it. Because one, to me, that kind of all of that, all of that prep, you know, is kind of like, mm -hmm. that takes the fun out of, you know, fun out of things. And, you know, it's just, it's uh, entirely too much. It's entirely yeah. too much. And then especially if you happen to have an encounter where the person, they're only kind of, in the groove with you for a couple minutes and now you didn't spend all this time you know, trying to <laughs> think, you know you're gonna be mad as hell look <laughs> you're gonna uh, be mad as hell. i've had conversations with uh other bottoms and whatnot that have been talking about how they um may go a couple days without uh eating or may um fast for like the you know the day before and whatnot and i'm like uh you can you can there's way like if a, a fleet can just get you cleared out as quick as you need and whatnot yeah. uh, and that's even with some um, women who participate in uh anal sex too yeah. how they may starve themselves or uh, when it comes up to that point where they are uh, going to be participating with the uh in anal sex with their partner Partner, they may just uh, eat only fruits and vegetables the day before, which I'm not knocking that. Do that. That's as long as you're eating. Like if you really want to make sure that you have uh, some kind of diet that um, is going to help, you know, with cleansing out your body, eat a lot more celery because that is what celery is great for is clearing out your intestines a little bit. So eating more celery is great. Um, making sure you have stuff with fiber in it and just having healthy bowel movements will be great as well. Absolutely. It's like, you don't have to starve yourself for a week just to get some dick. Uh, right. Let's not do that. And I, and I think that the, the, mentality of it is because of the fact like to be you know completely honest you know you don't want to have you know any kind of painting accidents to you mm -hmm. know happen and things like that but something that also is a stigma that you know needs to be you know tackled and just you know just completely rethought it's like 
for the pe for the the people that do um, engage in the top aspect of you know mm-hmm. penetration, you know you you have to understand that you're dealing with the body. The body mm-hmm. is the body. The body is going to have natural you know natural functions. Now I'm not saying that that is a just cause to you know go ahead and if you are you know happen to be you know be penetrated that you know to go ahead and eat some entirely heavy and, you know, Mm -hmm. then to, you know, engage in a sexual encounter. No, but, um, but just know that, yeah, accidents, you know, they're, you know, they, they, they may happen. So, you Mm -hmm. know, like, that's what you take the aspect of when you engage in anal penetration, Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, I just, you know, I hate the fact that when, you know, when I see, you know, like comments of, you know, saying like, oh, you know, somebody better not ever do that on me because, you know, like it's all right, you know, it's just going to be a wrap and, you know, just just all of that stuff, because it's like you're you're reinforcing innately what is the what is the problem. Mm-hmm. It's like, why be there? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it's, it is a part it's, it's it's natural for the body like this is another reason why it's more it's better to just wear condoms just in case if that do happen take the it's fucking cool. condom off throw it in the trash and put on another one yeah. like it's is that simple it, it, and even if yeah and mm-hmm. even if you know uh, some type of incident does happen just wash yourself yes wash yourself off real quick and then just get back into it like it. It's, it's not that big of a deal it's, yeah, but it's, and, it's and i feel so bad for so so many people you know men and women who have just been shamed in you know just sexual encounters and and a lot of times you know th- those shaming incidents are what has our sexual perspectives to be what they are you know mm-hmm. when you are you know consistently saying that you know you're just you know this you know in this particular in this particular sexual position or role and it's like you know we don't think about how much our past experiences of embarrassment and shame actually play you know a part into that Mm -hmm. that's like even the other day I was just uh, scrolling through um, some profiles and whatnot and I saw somebody who's like um, you have to have tip top um hygiene um uh, make sure you clean out and all this other stuff and i'm like okay and uh, on this same person's uh, profile i think had top or, yeah was top or whatever and mm-hmm. i'm like so i i, I get what you're trying to say here because hygiene is important like if yeah, you, of course and of course you know there's those kinks that is a little bit more on the um rustic side of things not right. not shaming y'all y'all do your thing do your thing um but it's like what are your hygienes like if you're over here trying to coach other people on that they have to have pristine hygiene some of you people who consider yourselves tops don't even know how to shower properly and you're trying to tell yeah. somebody else how to behave yeah. with and, their body but don't you always find that though it's like the people who have this laundry list of things that are a necessity like you act like your shit don't stink. Like, you know, so it's like, you know, you ain't, you're not the picturesque, you mm-hmm. know, person either. And then when you, and then those kind of profiles, it's like, there is so vague because it's like, when you say, you know, top cleanliness or top hygiene, it's like, well, what do you particularly mean by that? Because everybody has their own natural body scent, their own natural mm-hmm. odor. So, you know, I would even prefer if like, if you're saying, if you said that, oh, like I prefer uh, women or men who smell like uh, lavender or, you know, like they smell like this particular fragrance or, you know, some, something that is attractive to you because at least then that way you're giving somebody, oh, this is a, you know, this is like a turn on for them, mm-hmm. you know, in some sort of way or fashion. But it's like when you make comments like that, it's like, what are what are people supposed to take for that? And then just because they're with you, they may not think that you're the pillar of good hygiene. Right. Know? Really? Like, uh, I know even for myself when it comes to because I'm getting out of that stage of using deodorant. Um mm-hmm. I, I still use like a natural deodorant every now and again, but mm-hmm. I, I like essential oils a lot better. Okay. Uh, and that I also like my, um, you know, if I'm, cause I'm not out here sweating up a storm for one. So, right. and since I'm in mostly, uh, highly ventilated areas, uh, with that is, has nothing but cold air blowing out, I'm not sweating up a storm. Right. So I continue to buy, um, <laughs> deodorant <laughs> for nothing, but of course I essential my, myself up because I love the, uh, sense that I have, 
Um, but I'm like, if you are talking about be in top hygiene, and if we're in, having uh, hot and sweaty sex, and I start to get musky because of that, so mm-hmm. is that now I have bad hygiene? Right. <laughs> and then knowing, and then knowing, like you say, like everybody's natural body is different. So mm-hmm. everybody is gonna sweat in more places than than you know others. Um, you know, you may have a you know places on your body that may do have a particular odor, uh, may have a particular odor. And it's not to say like, oh, you know, like, because that is present that, oh my God, like you're a dirty person or, you know, like mm-hmm. something like that. And that, cause that, if we even think about, you know, like there was some, you know, a lot of talk within like social media, I believe like it, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was like with like Ashton Kutcher or, you know, something like that, where they were talking about like the whole bathing aspect about like not necessarily bathing, you know, like oh, washing you, your legs. That yeah, thing. yeah, or some yeah, or something like that. And I, I remember when I was hearing it, I'm like, when the outrage started, I was like, okay, like this is being blown way, you know, kind of like way out of proportion. They are not saying like they don't bathe, you know, their children mm-hmm. or you know anything like that. And even again, going back to medical professionals, you know, like they say, if you are not like in the gym or have some sort of um job like in construction where you are constantly you know like sweating and you know things like that technically speaking like you could you know go a day or so without Mm -hmm. they and you're still and it's not to say you're a dirty person and a lot of medical professionals have even warned against bathing too much Mm -hmm. because when you do that you are messing up the follicles in your you know those follicles in your skin that are being built to you know protect you from like insect and bug bites and you know things like that so when you are if you are bathing too much Mm-hmm. You know, that can, uh, you know, that can cause irritation and, you know, just things like that. But you have a lot of people and like, I, I don't knock it because, you know, people feel the need for their cleanliness. That's all, you know, that's all well and good. But I'm just saying, like, it's not a it's not like a oh, my God, like you dirty person. Right. Because I, like you didn't happen to bathe for a day. Because I, I remember this is uh, something that happened back in the day. I, I was also kind of shamed for um by my statement and trust me I, I still don't give a damn um but it was a post about how frequently some people um bathe and um one person okay I know there's a there's a point where I'm just like I just can't do it if that's you and no uh, nobody can smell anything continue to do you because whatever but um someone's like oh I um, bathe every single day the other one's like um I probably um they they were like every 48 hours or so uh or and then there were some people that's like four days uh or even a week once a week uh i don't think i can do once a week but i commented saying well you know for myself i actually only bathe every other day because one i live i i'm in a work environment where yeah. <laughs> i'm sitting down every day i'm not active i'm not sweating i'm not musky musky i'm not any of that i'm just you know living my life Mm -hmm. uh and somebody even mentioned that oh well you know you're a plus size man and because you're a plus size man you should be thinking of your hygiene a lot more because we sweat a lot more but i'm like me being plus size have nothing to do with my overall hygiene because trust me if I if I'm going to be hooking up with somebody, oh, definitely I'm going to be you know showering up. Mm-hmm. If I'm going out to the club somewhere, if even right. after the club I'm uh, taking a shower. But it's like I'm going to work. I'm not going to really be around people. Yeah. Even if I am going to be around people, they're not going to be able to smell me because I can't even smell myself. Like because mm-hmm. you know if you smell yourself, other people can smell you. So exactly. it's like <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what people don't recognize. Like everybody's body is different. So mm-hmm. you may need to be someone who you know bathes a lot more frequently because of what it is that you do. But like you say, if you are someone that you know, like hey, like four days out of the week, I'm not really even buying anybody. I'm inside, so. You know, because I take, you know, the fact that you share, I mean, even just for myself, I mean, yes, obviously I do, you know, bathe frequently, but it's one of those things where, yeah, I may take an actual bath may, maybe every other day or maybe every two days. Mm-hmm. And in between those days, I may be like taking like a quick wash off, you know, to wash, you know, like my important private areas or, you know, mm-hmm. something like that. And of course, like if I'm going out or something like that, of course, I 
they, like you say, if I know I'm going to be around, you know, people, you know, things like that. So I do, you know, definitely see what you're saying. It's kind of like, if it's not getting to a point where it's like, you, like you say, like, you know, you smell, when you smell yourself, then yeah, you know, you get to, mm-hmm. a point where, you know, Hey, you know, it's bad, but you know, it's like everybody's body temp bodies older, you know, it's, it's very different. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just, yeah, I just like people just calm down. Worry about your own body. Like your everybody own needs body. to just worry about their own body. But I do know, I do know the fact that it does become a problem though. Um, you know, I have a very close family member of mine who I won't mention, but um she is very sensitive to smell. Mm. And she can't, you know, stand for people to, you know, be hovering, you know, like over her and things like that, especially if they have like a certain, you know, type of scent, you know, and and it's, you know, in certain instances, you know, when she talks about this, it is funny, but um, I can only imagine, you know, like there's a difference, you know, in like natural odor and you know just being mm. funky or musty so it's like yeah. and like i say that may not even be delivery it just maybe be depending on what you're doing mm-hmm. you know so it's like yeah for all of us that have a very heightened sense of smell it's not you know it's not really one of those things that's that bad <laughs> Look, i will say most definitely for those people who are out here working out uh, most definitely myself um because Look, every every day I work out, I'm taking a shower because uh, but um, please, please, uh, if you know that you uh have a pungent um body odor, and I don't mean that in a bad way, um, sometimes you know just running uh something up under there to you know relinquish that odor a little bit is good because sometimes I'm not trying to wake up and just automatically smell some onions in my room. I'm not like <laughs> no shame, but it's one of those things. But it's like even even when it's like working out, like um, there's been sometimes I will come home after I worked out and my clothes don't even have a smell to them. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm still taking that shower, but it's like things like that. And, and, and I think that we're so subconscious about that, even being young, because I remember the one thing I hated in high school was that because I went to a high school where you did not have to um, necessarily engage, you know, um, with like group activities or anything, but you had to dress out, you know, Mm -hmm. so dressing out was a part of your gym grade. And I remember, especially in the boys locker room, for whatever the reason, um, they would like get change from, you know, their, their gym clothes, but instead of just letting their natural, you know, kind of like body odor, you know, just linger for a period or two, mm-hmm. they would get in the locker room and spray all, all this damn Axe body spray. Oh. And I'm just like walking into it. It's like, oh, my God, I'm ready to pass out because it's like y'all are really not understand. And I'm not. And I and I, trust me, chemistry was my one of my worst subjects. <laughs> but I know enough to know that. When you are mixing sweat and, and and to me, Axe already stinks anyway, just personally my it's opinion. Strong. It's strong. And when you are mixing those two scents together, it's just like atrocious. And mm-hmm. I always used to have in my head, I'm like, guys, y'all really weren't doing anything like too much. Y'all were throwing around the football in the gym or playing basketball or, you know, whatever. Like letting your natural body odor just linger. Natural body odor does not stink like it's not Mm -hmm. a stink type of a smell yeah you can yeah smell it but it's not like a stink type of a smell but by you spraying all of that onto now mixing that mixing that axe with your with your body sweat it's like yeah now you do stink (laughs) now i'm triggered because i I remember uh working out and trying that once in the under under my arm burns so fucking bad i was like i would never do this again no like why why no. how the hell did y'all do these all these years no i would rather just rinse off my fucking piss and just be great no yeah, I, no i just i can't <laughs> like it brings back such terrible memories <laughs> like that's another reason why i just prefer just to do essential oils or just not wear deodorant these days is because one i realize when i'm just walking around the track or exercise or doing something light and I just leave yeah I might have my uh, little bit of onion uh, smell going on but it's, it's like you said it's not that 
strong is not that uh heavy and on top of that um like just just in general um it's it's nothing that I actually like for some weird reason I smell better than I did when I was using a lot more deodorants and um, sprays um, versus when I'm not using them and just using like a uh, essential oil. Yeah. And, and something that, you know, and especially particularly speaking, you know, specifically to, uh, to men, but this can, you know, be applied to anybody. As you get older, you have to get to know your body and know that not all fragrances are going to be for you. Mm. Not all uh, lotions are going to be for you and things like that. So you really have to find things that um, are good to your skin. Um, I take that, you know, as a high compliment. One of the compliments I always get about myself is that people always think I have like good skin. So I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, but, so um, but it's one of those things that, you know, you have, that's a, pro- that's a process, mm-hmm. you know, there's a, you know, there are certain type of lotions that you can apply if you have, you know, particularly dry skin a lot, you know, there's particular, you know, fragrances. Like I know for myself, I'm a smaller, I'm a smaller guy. I'm only five, three. So I don't like, um, strong colognes. Because to me, it doesn't fit with my body type because it doesn't fit with my body type. Mm. So to, for me, for as far as fragrances go, of course, I love cologne, but I love colognes that have a little bit more of a lighter, that have a little bit more of a lighter scent because that goes with the nature of my height, my height and my weight. Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of times people don't think about those, you know, think about those kind of things that not all fragrances are going to appeal to your, your body. Mm-hmm. I know, like for myself, I, I, um, I, I don't like, okay, polo. Okay. Uh, this one polo that, um, polo f- fragrance I have, I love it. It actually smells really good. And I do use that every now and again. Um, but I prefer lighter smelling, um, uh, fragrances as well as, uh, like if I'm going to the store to just get something and it's, uh, like categorized unisex, female, masculine, whatever, mm. I'm more on the side of like the feminine, uh, perfumes mm. that mm. are, uh, a lot lighter smells mm. and are even something that's more of the unisex than I am of the masculine sense, because those right. things are just way too strong for my, numbers. yeah, they're way too strong, just, right? I don't care that much. I don't want you to know that I'm uh, I'm up in this bitch every time I walk into the room. I don't care. I don't need that. I don't need that broad uh, <laughs> brazing a- announcement for y'all. Mm-hmm. I just want y'all to know. Look, a nigga just showed the fuck up, and you already know what the fuck is going on. And that's exactly. it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so yeah, yeah. So I definitely, you know, as a PSA announcement for, for everybody out there, you know, get to know, get to know your own body. And just because something may smell nice, you know, some just because something may smell nice doesn't mean that it will necessarily smell nice on you. Mm, yeah. So that's why it's important to have people to be on uh, have people in your circle, no matter if that's your family or your friends, to be candidly honest with you, like, hey, you know, do you like this? You know, do you like this scent, you know, or something? Because I'll be the first one to tell you, like, oh, no, I don't particularly like that. Or, you know, I'll be like, oh, yes, that smells wonderful. You know? Right. You know, so definitely get people around you that will tell you the truth. Like, I need y'all to tell me if I'm out here, you know, sweating like a sock. <laughs> Ain't it? Yeah. Now I will say I, I definitely found my fragrance because I got way too many comments like, oh, oh, bro, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> you already fucking know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm thank smelling you. myself. I am. Yeah. <laughs> but get a whiff, get a whiff, get a whiff, get a whiff. Oh my gosh, when oh my, I love wearing it because like, uh, and I, if I'm going to be around people. And I'm a hugger too, and you just get that hug, and then you get that whiff, and you just like, mm, okay, mm. bird. <laughs> you know, you know, I came here to be sexy. <laughs> Look, this the grown folks though. This Y'all ain't ready. Mm. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for this. Oh, You'll fall in love it. too quick. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I like. When I, so one of the things, this is completely off topic. One of the things that I focus on in terms of coaching is sex, sexual expression. And I feel um, that sexual expression, um, uh, well, sexual experience. Um, so for sexual experience, coaching is like understanding everything that um, 
works out for you and what um, can build that connection with you and your partner during that entire experience. And that is looking at the smells that you have, looking at the sounds, looking at, at the environment colors and all the other stuff that enhances the experience. So um, for those people who might be, you know, trying to enhance their sexual experience, think about if you are both people who like smells think about the smells that y'all have in your environment and see how that impacts your sexuality so that's yeah. that's just a free coaching thing yeah. uh, <laughs> use the environment use the environment it could do wonders have you ha- have you in an explosion of a great and a wonderful of a wonderful variety <laughs> look look having an awakening, <laughs> awakening <laughs> <this world>. um, <laughs> speak about the the awakening <laughs> <laughs> so um I know we're over the uh, time limit and need to get into um, never have I ever and whatnot, but I feel like this still is an important uh, conversation to have. Uh, It is um, just body scans in general and, you know, how sexual health is a part of your uh, physical health and also part of your mental health too. But um, what what are some of the importance of body scans most definitely as it relates to uh, STIs and whatnot? Yes. So, um, I have a, um, I have a very close family member who, um, works in, um, works in the medical field and something that, um, they say that they get calls in a lot of, a lot of time is that people don't know what to do if they're experiencing, you know, something of a STI. And, um, it's kind of like one of those things, one, you're kind of like embarrassed or shamed to even call about it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it's also one of those things that, well, if you think that something is going on, um, you know, definitely get it checked, you know, you know, immediately, because it could be something, it could be, you know, it could be nothing. But um, definitely, as far as body scans, body scans are important for um, all genders, all identities, because, um, you know, the nature of you keeping up with your health from just a phys- just a uh, visual perspective is highly important. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, just to, that's why it's important, you know, to feel on yourself, not just for pleasure, pleasure mm-hmm, purposes, mm-hmm. but, you know, just for health purposes as well, you know, feel around your arm, feel around your thigh, feel around, you know, your private areas just to, you know, make sure that, you know, you're not, you know, see if there's any bumps that are forming or lumps or, you know, you know, those kind of, you know, those kind of things. If, um, if it is something that is forming that looks a little bit minuscule, um, it's a it's a uh, prominent thing in black culture, you know. Put Vaseline on everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Vaseline know, be working I say, though. <laughs> try, I say, you know, try Vaseline at first. But yeah, definitely, if you notice, you know, something that is uh, becoming becoming a lot more um, prominent, or you know, you're getting, you know, like a lot of bumps in a lot of places, mm-hmm. or you know, something like that, something that you can clearly see that is not not right. Um, you know, that also goes for like certain types of itching and, you know, things like that, you know, of course, Mm. for um, certain areas, burning sensations, um, you know, excessive discharge, excessive discharge. Yes. Um, So yeah, those are, those are like things that, you know, you definitely want to be on the lookout for and to watch and to watch for. Mm -hmm. So um, body scans are not just for breast cancer. It's for, it's for everybody in, even in breast cancer is not just for women (laughs) Uh, are um, 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 vulva owning owning persons is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, When it comes to STIs, definitely, like you said, look at your body, look for um, uh, patches of bumps, look at random bumps that's forming on your body. Definitely with the discharge. Discharge is normal, people. It is normal. uh, Because I know there's some people who's just like, okay, uh, um, I don't understand what the hell is going on here. Uh, Why is this like this fluid (laughs) leaking out of my body? It's okay. That is that is something normal. Most definitely if you are a Volvo but uh, excessive discharge when the uh, when things are either discolored, uh, looking a little bit different, or if if it's uh, increased in flow, then definitely look into that. And and I do want to say it's also important to uh, because I know every year when I have my yearly physical, of course, uh, and this is why it's important to make sure that you um, have a PCP that you're you know that you're 
comfortable with a primary care physician because when they make you do like your blood and your urine tests, um, sometimes when, especially like for urine samples, you may not be able to see it because of the coloring, but sometimes, you know, and it's not to, you know, scare people out there, but just speaking personally for myself, I have had mm -hmm. times where um, there's been like some blood in my urine. And it may be because of the fact, you know, you're not drinking, you know, maybe enough water. It may be something else, but it's something that if it does cause a nature of a concern to, you know, just monitor, it may just be something small and, you know, hey, you just may need to be drinking a little bit more water. Or, you know, if it doesn't really give cause for concern, it may, you know, be because, you hey, you need to do a little bit of this more. But definitely don't discount the fact that just because you don't happen to see something in certain regards, mm -hmm. that something may not be happening. So in those instances, it is, you know, I'm going to say, you know, depending on how often, you know, you need to visit, you know, uh, a primary care or, you know, um, health medical professionals that, you know, you're comfortable with. Just make sure definitely in the annual visit that you are wanting to make sure that you're doing regular urine samples or blood tests and things like that, because those are the quickest ways to, to know if something is something is going on. Amen to that. On that note, let's go ahead and bring out that never have I ever shit. Oh, oh my man. God. And I'm just going to let you know now, I already, uh, I did, I just, while you were talking, I picked the card and I did read the card and it just, it went there. Um, okay. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. So it is never have I ever tasted my own cum because I wanted to know what it tasted like. Oh yeah, I have. I have as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's natural. Um, I, I would say say it's natural too, because you need to know what it tastes like. If you out here yeah. thinking other people need to taste it, taste your own. If yeah, you don't exactly. like the taste, what you need to improve that taste because other people are not going to like it. Yeah, I, and I mean, even in you know like sexual conversations that you know mm -hmm. I happen to have, like I will say that you know I'm not necessarily a you know, big, you know, come person. Like I don't necessarily even like my own come on me, but mm -hmm. it's just like, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I think that's just part of natural curiosity. Like you want to know, you know, what it tastes like. So right. So um taste your come people, taste it. See enjoy enjoy your own fruits. <laughs> <laughs> it's your seed. Love it. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to do a would you rather. So would mm -mm, this is actually interesting. Uh, would you rather accidentally send nude photos to your ex or accidentally send them to a neighbor? Mm, accidentally send nude photos to your ex or to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I guess I would rather send them to the ex because I just have the feeling like the ex is like more than likely if they're an ex they've already probably seen me anyway so it's like it's not going to be anything that's a big deal depending on who the neighbor is though that could be a little bit uh creepy -ish. it could also be like well you know my news are you know in taste so you know i may be getting some unwanted attention that you know i may not be seeking Ooh. at the moment so you know just yeah, I feel like the neighbor thing is a little bit more of a toss up. It depends on who the neighbor is. And then also, uh, like I say, it depends on who the neighbor is, because I think about the fact like, and I don't know, just taking this to a very dark place. Like, what if the neighbor happened to be like a minor or, you know, something like or, you know, something like that, like. No, like That's no, a good point. It's, just, it, it's just too many unknown factors with the nature of a neighbor. But yeah, my ex. Yeah, my ex has probably seen me, new, obviously seen me new, so it's not like that. Be like, this is what you're missing out on now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I upgraded a little bit, you know, you, know, you know. Still fine, just a little bit extra exactly. on that. <laughs> hey, shoot, you never know. I may have sent it on purpose. Just <laughs> I'm done. Uh, I will say um, definitely wouldn't mind sending one um, to an ex it's just like okay you've yeah. seen a nude before it, it is what it is okay. and i'm also with you it depends on the fucking neighbor because uh, mm -hmm. i do have a couple neighbors that i'm just like you know what if if the interest 
a line. Let's yeah. go. Let's see what the fuck. Yeah. Let's pop some exactly. shit off and pop exactly. things off multiple times. Exactly. Like fire crap pop off. Let's go. What's yeah. up? Yeah, because on that flip side, you know, you can, you, like you say, you can have that neighbor where it's like, you know, we can get this on and pop. And if we, if we want to take it there, look, pull the fuck up. We're in the same neighborhood. What's up? <laughs> like, ring that bell. Look, like all, I, all I can say, look, if, if this, if this becomes a regular thing, it becomes a regular thing. But just know it's going to be strictly fucking because um, I'm not trying to date you. <laughs> not not really. This is a lust thing, not a love thing. <laughs> right. Let's make sure we so, have. That's Kurt. That's Kurt. That's real Kurt. But <laughs> would you like a sex question? Sure. Let's see what it's talking about. So, what's your policy on having sex under the influence? Ooh, it's policy for having sex under the influence. Um, still, that there needs to be a consent that is involved. Um, I actually uh, read something that's a very prothetic piece of, um, of work where um, the author was describing the nature of them being, um, not necessarily being the one that was violated, but felt, feeling like he was the one that was the violator. Um, mm-hmm. And even though his partner at the time didn't see it that way, um, it doesn't make the experience, you know, nonetheless. And so I really think that um, if you if you're if you happen to be coupled or even dating, just recognize, be aware of the state of intoxication that inebriates the both of you, because obviously we know that alcohol affects people, you know, very differently. And, you know, just make sure that you are also having boundaries, you know, with yourself. If you, I, I'm not going to say that there's nothing, you know, wrong with drunk, you know, wrong with drunk sex. That can actually be a, you know, good bit of a turn on. I do think that anything that's done in overindulgence is, is definitely a cause for concern. So if you mm-hmm. recognize that you are only being with your partner, only being this person, being with this person, if it's under the influence, then yes, that's a, that's a concern that needs to that needs to be rectified and addressed. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong, you know, with being, you know, a little under influence while you're, while, while, you know, wanting to, you know, be with the partner, but just recognize about the fact that consent still needs to be had. And if, and it's a part of the reason why you need to be very honest about your, honest with yourself. If you know that you are only a person that can have that one or two drinks has you, you know, out there, Guess what? You don't need to be in a sexual situation. If you know that you are someone that, hey, you tend to be a little bit more touchy feely or a little bit more handsy or maybe even a little bit more aggressive, you don't need to be putting yourself in a sexual situation because something that you don't think can happen can escalate into something. And it could be something that could be that could be harmless, Mm. but you just you don't want it to get to that point. And I know personally for me, I, I don't mind having, you know, a drink or two, but I've always been the type of drinker where it's like, I, I don't drink to the point to get drunk. Like I drink to just have a little bit of a buzz. Once I have a buzz, I'm good. So really like two drinks for me is, is good. So, and I I wouldn't want to put myself in a situation where I am, you know, I'm so inebriated that, you know, the physical Mm -hmm. autonomy that I have of my own body, I feel like there's a loss of control with it. So I don't know. That's just where I go in my mind. I'm I'm with you on that. That's uh, I will say that is essentially my uh, my policy as well. Uh, like you said, consent is definitely definitely most important. Uh, and I I I don't mind having drunk sex if it's uh, if I'm drinking wine because uh, one wine just is a very mellow thing and uh, I I just like wine wine is delicious and uh, I don't have it enough Uh, like every once in a while I might drink some wine but like if I had uh, if I was with a partner and we had like drank a a bottle of wine or whatever and we decided to have sex after that I would love that Hmm. but uh, on uh, when it's come to other drugs and mixing that I personally am not going to indulge in that. Uh, have I had sex while drinking tequila? Still very functioning, probably two shots, and that's about it. Still can function and do whatever I want to do and whatnot. And I have a, a good experience, but it's just, I don't like the lingering effects of uh, other alcohols outside of just wine. Wine is something that comes in and just 
quickly goes out or just, you know, soothes you and has me relax. My partner's relax. It is what it is. We just enjoy the moment. Yeah. Um, but being um, like extremely drunk, belligerent, or even just um, to the point where you can barely walk. I don't want no parts in that. I don't, I don't want to talk to that. That can just go to sleep, relax. Do you want me to uh, braid your hair while you're sleeping? Do you want me to uh, rub your back? Whatever you need, I can be there to help you out. But if it's anything sexual, it's, it's just not going to rock over here. I don't want none of that. And exactly. even if I just so happen, because I don't really binge drink like that, and I don't see myself getting that drunk anytime soon. But even if I'm the person that's coming home and I'm just that super drunk, just put me in bed because that's what I really want. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, just go to sleep. That's what I'm really want. I don't really want to have sex. I don't. I I would rather just be not the just fuck out. yeah, just yeah, just turn me on my side and you know, just let me sleep it off. <laughs> don't touch me. Don't touch me, Lord. Don't touch me. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> so. Uh, I will say that's the end of this episode. Do you have any tips, tricks, or anything that you want to share with the uh, audience? Not necessarily tips or tricks. You know, you have to have a X-rated conversation with me for that. But what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but what I but what I will say is just you know recapping. You know, something obviously a lot of things that we've talked about. Um, you know, for anybody that's out there, please do not feel uh, stigmatized. If you happen to have been exposed to an STI or STD, mm -hmm. please be informed, you know, about Pat, you know, um, sexual history of, you know, your, your part, your current partner or past partners. It can actually be a good, uh, actual great um, aspect as far as foreplay goes. It doesn't have to be some sort of cringy or awkward, you know, kind of uh, thing to bring up. There are great guides to how to bring up sexual health in dating and things like that to actually make it, make it a good part of courtship. Um, so definitely, you know, don't, don't feel like you're alone. There are plenty of resources out there to help you in uh, navigate having the conversation. Um, you know, with, uh, with yourself. Um, definitely make sure that, you know, you're keeping your cleanliness up, making sure you bathe properly, you know, those kind of, those kind of things, of course. And yeah, just as when it comes to your overall health, just make sure that you're always informed. If something feels off, definitely check into it. Don't dismiss it. It's rather to be overly cautious about something and it turn out to be nothing than to dismiss it. And now it's something major that could have, you know, been, been rectified, that could have been rectified. There we go. On that note, thank you all. Actually, first, thank you so much for, you know, joining me this episode, Tyrell. I, 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 was, I was almost disrespectful. I, we can't oh, do that no, on the no, Little Podcast. It's no, it's no worries. <laughs> I, always, I always love coming and thank you so much for having me. So... Thank you all so much for listening to the Whole Little Key Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. And just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful. You are worthy of happiness and joy. You are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.